Hello and welcome to my tutorial video on how to build my design for a villager trading hall. In my last video I showcased this design and if you are just looking for a short video to see what this hall can or does, check that video out, the link is in the video description. If you want to see how to build it, you are at the right place. But I'm not gonna build this big boy of a villager trading hall, I'm just gonna build one with six villagers. So let's get started. First off, we're gonna start with a railway system for the villagers where they drop down to and get sent to the villager. So what we're gonna do is we go out from this block one, two, three, four, five, six, and up five blocks. One, two, three, four, five. You need one of these drop shoes for every villager in your trading hall. So I'm building one with six, so I'm gonna build six of these L shapes. If you're gonna build one with 40, you're gonna need 40 of those. You connect them up with just one block in between and just go ahead and build more of exact the same thing. After you've done that, we're gonna go three blocks over, one, two, three, need this, those are just placeholders, and we're gonna do build the same structure, just mirrored. So one, two, three, four, five, five, six, and five up, one, two, three, four, five. And also connect these up, and build one for every villager you wanna have. In my case it looks like this. Next up we're gonna connect the left and the right side from the villager trading hall. So we go in two and come out one and here one and then we're gonna connect both of them. I'm just doing this to get one centralized spot for the zombie. Uh, we're gonna send them one, two, three, four out to this point. You could easily change that and have the zombification chamber right there right there, over there, wherever you want. You just have to connect both up and send them wherever you want to. After we connected up the left and the right side and chose a nice spot for the zombie to go, we're gonna start and put in some rails. So first off, some powered rails, so when the villagers get dropped down onto the railway station, they get sent off directly. Remember to power those just by any kind of redstone source. I'm choosing levers because they are pretty cheap, but you can choose whatever you want to power those. You can also already put in two powered rails here, but don't power them yet. Then we're going to start and connect everything up to the zombification chamber by doing it this way. The way the rails are placed now, are all um, all go into this one direction right here. So either villager gets dropped down and sent off right to the place where he belongs to, the zombification chamber. Next up, the zombification chamber. On this block will later sit the, zomb the zombie. Then we are gonna add three blocks here and a row of blocks behind this. And then we add another row of blocks. Ne next, the observer going in here with a piece of string in front of it. We're gonna add a sticky piston facing down behind the observer and a redstone block with a one air, black air block gap between this. After that, we're gonna use some blocks over here. This is temporary and not needed. Then we go down one row and go over to here. This would also be not needed. And one block here. So we're gonna add a redstone line two on this. Those are getting powered by the redstone block powering the rails. Then we're gonna drag down the redstone line to here powering this block. We're gonna add a redstone torch. This is gonna get uh, no signal since the block is powered. 
then a temporary block here and there, and a sticky piston right here. Um, next up we can enclose the zombies so we can't go anywhere like this and one additional row and remember to block off sunlight from the zombie. Since we also don't want our freshly converted zombies to get burned, we're gonna add a block here and enclose him like so. This block needs to be um, an air block so the piston can push over the rail. This just makes sure that when the villager comes in, um, the piston pushes out the rail and the villager can't get back sand off. With the zombie chamber done, we want to get in the floor for the actual trading hall. To make that happen, we're going to add some observers on this pillar facing into the trading hall on both sides. Then we're going to add some temporary blocks, remove two of those and add a piston there. Those pistons are the places where the villagers actually we will stand on. Don't need those. Like so. And do this for here the same. There we have it. Like this. And then we're going to fill in the floor here. After adding the floor, it should look a little something like this. Next up, we're gonna get in the working stations for the villagers. This can be anything you want. I'm just going to get some classic lecterns here. So then we go underneath the floor and add right here next to the pistons three blocks, one block gap, two block since we don't have any more uh, like trading hall cells. If you had more, like three, one block again, three, and so on and so forth. Just make sure not only three and then one block gap. So we do this for the other side as well. Three here, one block gap, two here, since we need a second one. This is for powering and locking the trading hall cells from each and every villager. So now we go down one block and in. This is a temporary block and can be removed. Same on the other side. And also same here. But we also want this as wide as the blocks in front with the torches. Now on the middle blocks we're gonna add repeaters. This should be here and here. And on the other blocks we're gonna add redstone dust. And then we're gonna connect up all the repeaters like this and add redstone to each and every block here now. Forgot to put some here. Go over here. Just everywhere. Redstone. So the repeaters are there to power these torches. These torches are the locking mechanism. They power the block in between the pistons. So in this case here we have a three cell, the middle one powers bow both pistons and so when you press buttons nothing will happen. Speaking of buttons, we're gonna add buttons on top of this redstone dust. This should be 
one block gap of your workstation. There, 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 and there. And now we have our basic redstone done for the inlay. Next up, we want to connect up the locking mechanism to the single trading cells from the villagers. So we go down two blocks, like here, two blocks gap, go out in line with the last block of your trading hall floor and add additional three blocks. One, two, three, then one over and up. And we're going to extend this to six blocks, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we get a uh, sticky piston facing upwards and an observer facing into this line we just built. Add a block over here and a sticky piston facing into the locking mechanism. We then can add a redstone line on the whole thing, like so, and do this for the other side as well. Sticky piston right here with a block on top. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put in the observer. Then we go one down and out and connect this up and add redstone dust on top of it. Get this block down again and add a redstone block right here to power the whole thing. So now the middle torches should be depowered and the buttons control the pistons where the villagers are standing on. While I was recording this video, I got a YouTube comment from Serviro saying that the build is directional. If shifted by 90 degree, this thing isn't working anymore, which is indeed true. So here's a quick fix how to prevent it from being directional. You just have to move these observers and pistons by one block over, like this and like this. Add another block here and here and a repeater facing into the piston. This is a fix for the directional issue. The other thing that happens with directionality is, um, let me show you right here, rails are also directional. So in this case the normal position for the cauldrons has to be up so when powered, the rail shows in this direction, leading to the next cell. When triggered, it gets pulled down, depowered, and the rail shifts. On this side, it has to be on the lower side and pulled up before we are sending in the villager. So always make sure that the cauldrons are in the right position. Test this if needed. Cauldron either up or down. Now we want to build the logic to sort back the villagers to the cell where they came from. For that we are placing a node block behind the observer, then one observer looking into the node block and one down looking into the node block. Then we are placing two um, placeholder blocks to place an observer facing upwards and then two more, three more <laughs> placeholder blocks and a piston facing downwards. Not a sticky piston, a regular piston. After that we came out here one block and place a sticky piston like so. This block can be gone. Then one block here, redstone dust on top and an observer looking into the redstone dust. Sticky piston on top and a cauldron. So what this now does is when we press the, the button the piston retracts, the observer uh, sees the change in block state, gives a signal into the node block and this observer sees the uh, uh, signal and this observer. So this one gives a signal into our locking mechanism 
so that the other buttons can be pressed and we don't clog up the system. And this one gives a signal through this block into this redstone dust. This observer sees the block change and this piston spits out the cauldron one block up. There we have it. The cauldron is now one block further up and the redstone block is retracted. That means our um, locking torches are now back on and we can't send any further villagers down into the railway. We do this now for each and every um, cell and um, this is a part where you can easily expand it. Just build this over and over again for each cell. At this point we can send down with the press of the button the villager down to the rails to the zombie and the system is also locking itself so we can't send the next villager. But now we want to send the villager if he gets zombified back up to the place where he belongs to. So for this we are placing some blocks here like this and a comparator reading out the cauldron. Then we need one more block like here, a powered rail, a detector rail on top of the piston, like this. Make sure the um, the rail is facing this way so when the minecart comes it goes over and is not going into the cell if not triggered. Powering this and then we are going up here using powered rails also here that was wrong we are building it like this so also here villager comes in just goes over and when he comes back out he goes back up then we keep up building up like this and powered rails so you can make it the way up. So at this point there are variations possible. I show you now a different version that I've shown in the testing world. It looks like this. Uh, don't forget to power the rails. Um, so now we have a detector rail here, some redstone, and we use a dispenser right here. And some blocks like this with redstone dust on top. So now we can use the weakness arrows since I've seen many people suggest it, we could use weakness arrows instead of weakness potions. This way, when the villager comes up, travels above the detector rail, when he's at this part of the track, he gets shot with the weakness potion applied and gets travel travels further to the cell he needs to get. One thing we have to make sure before we continue building this up over and over again for each module. Make sure your cauldrons have water in it so the comparator can actually read them out. So now just build this part here and there and there. I'll do it real quick. Now that all rates are in place I've just connected after the last path a straight line over here to make it here work also. You can add powered rails in between those modules to give the villager a little bit more speed. So for instance you can just place a powered rail here and power it. You could do this with every part in between to give him more speed or just every like a third or something like that. At this point it would be a good time to check the directionality of the rails. To do so you can just right click the redstone dust and when the cauldron gets uh, pushed up 
the rail should now bend to the cell where we triggered the redstone dust. And when pulled back down, it goes back leading to the next cell. On this side, I tested it already, and if pulled up, it's going the wrong way. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a cauldron and water and change the not the the default state of the cauldrons, moving them up like this. So now the rails are in the right place and facing to the next cell, except the last one. This one won't change direction. If no cell is triggered, the villager will always go to the last cell. And now if we would press the button, it would push down, pull down the cauldron and the villager would get sent in the right cell. Always make sure to check these things before you actually use the um, trading hall. Now we are almost done with our trading hall. The only thing left to do is build a little drop shoot for our villagers when they came back from the railway up top. So they don't just fly into your trading hall, but they get nicely fit back into here. Also make it a real drop shoot so we can't just slide away when he comes back into his place. So now our villager trading hall is finished. I've just went ahead and added some villagers as well as a zombie down in the zombification chamber and some temporary blocks just to keep the zombie white villagers from getting burnt. Now let's see if this works. Other villagers can't be sent off. Villager gets processed. Detected. Weakness applied. And there we have it. A fully functional trading hall. Thank you very much for the interest in this design and the amazing feedback you guys gave me, as well as the ideas for variations. I hope this video was helpful for you, and if you have any questions about the trading hall, let me know in the comments down below. I'll try my best to answer them. If you made it this far in the video, I also wanted to let you know that I started a Let's Play from the Ostercrack server. I hope to see you again, and bye bye!